Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. This is my Framework 13 laptop with an 11th gen Core i5 processor. It's the original model released a couple years ago. There was an issue discovered with the real-time clock battery circuit in this laptop. The little coin battery for the real-time clock, it's called the RTC battery, it's rechargeable, but it only charges when the laptop is connected to a charger. It doesn't charge from the main laptop battery when the laptop is not connected to a charger. This means that if the laptop is left not on a charger for long enough, that battery will die. And making this problem worse is the fact that if that battery is dead, the laptop will not turn on. This leads to situations where the laptop is not connected to a charger for a few weeks, the coin cell powering the RTC circuit dies, and the laptop will no longer turn on until it's plugged in and left for a bit for that battery to charge. And this happens even if the actual laptop battery has plenty of charge. Going even further down the rabbit hole of this issue, if that little coin cell battery ever fails and loses the ability to maintain a charge, as mine has, the laptop will simply refuse to turn on at any time unless it's plugged into the wall so that the charger can power that RTC circuit. Framework offered free replacement RTC batteries for those whose battery failed like mine, and they also came up with a board rework solution that allowed basically some soldering on the board to be done to change some circuitry so that the little coin cell RTC battery would actually be charged off of the main, uh, the main laptop battery. And they recently came up with an easier rework solution that replaces the coin cell with a small circuit board that acts as sort of a dummy battery to power the RTC circuit directly from the laptop battery. That way, as long as the main laptop battery is charged, the RTC circuit is powered. If that battery ever dies, you're going to have to plug it in to turn it on anyway. All of these solutions have been offered for free, but not performed for free. In other words, they sent me this battery substitute module for free, but I have to install it myself. So that's what I'm doing today. They did provide helpful instructions on their website, but as I'm a bit of a rebel, I'm not going to pull the main board out of the case for this work, which is one of the steps they list. Either way, thought I'd bring you along for the ride, so let's get started. The first step is to remove the input cover, and that just requires uh, loosening these five screws, which are captured. Once the screws are removed, the input cover is just held on with magnets, so it lifts free. And you just have to be careful that you don't dislodge the ribbon cable. I'm going to disconnect that. Now, as I said, I'm not actually going to remove the main board for this, but I am going to remove the battery so that not only is it disconnected, but I'm not soldering over top of it. Disconnected the connector, took out three more captured screws, and the battery should lift free. This is the coin cell that we will be uh, replacing with this little circuit board. And the procedure for removing and installing this is actually kind of delicate because this little plastic clip can break pretty easily. Let's see if I can get the battery out of there without breaking the clip. All right, battery removed, not too bad. And actually, before I put the board in, uh, the place that we have to solder the wire, there's just one wire that has to be soldered on. It's actually under this sticker, so I'm going to pull this sticker off. Come up here. Okay, set that aside. We'll put that back on when we're done. And the place where that wire has to get soldered is right to the side of this capacitor here, uh, right above where it says PL331. We have to get that soldered right there. 
This is the board and the wire that has to get soldered there. Um, just in preparation, I'm going to snip this just a little bit shorter. Make sure that little tag doesn't end up in the computer. And I'm going to start heating up my iron. I'm going to get that tinned before I snap it into the holder. I don't have any fancy flux, just this little tin of paste flux. Uh, while I'm heating up the iron, I'm just going to put a tiny little dab on that capacitor and on the wire. I'm also going to tin the tip of my iron. And tin this wire. Now the insulation melts on that thing pretty quick, so we'll have to be careful. Now we want to clip this into the holder, uh, just making sure that you know one of these electrical contacts on the side is contacting this tiny little terminal on the side of the holder. Bit of a tight squeeze, but it went in there. You gotta be delicate with that. Then I'm just gonna kinda shape the wire so that it lays a pretty close to where I want. Um, it's great to have a tweezers to hold it in place or something like that, but I find that if you can get it shaped so that it lays really, really close to where you want, you're going to be a lot better off. So I have pretty shaky hands, so forgive that. Probably isn't the kind of thing I should be doing with my shaky hands, but I'm going to. So if I hold that right where it goes, that's not good. I'm way too shaky, and this is not how I want it. Wow. on there but it's on there and they did say in their guide that this even tinier capacitor right above PL right above this one here it's actually connected to the same circuit so if this happened to bridge to this the other side of this capacitor here that would be okay it wouldn't cause any issues and I did confirm with the tweezers that it is, you know, I kind of tugged on it a little bit. You want to tug on it a little because if it's going to fall off, you want it to happen now. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of route this cable over a little just so that it's not above any of the tall components. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's the soldering done. Now we just put it back together and hope it powers up. It's just a habit of mine. I always get all the screws started before I snug any of them up. And then the battery connector. We want to make sure we go in nice and straight. It's a little tough because of the length of the cord. But we want to make sure that that goes in nice and straight so that it engages properly with the pins. It doesn't bend any of them. And our intrusion alarm is on, but <laughs> we won't worry about that. Underneath here, I'm just going to snap the, uh, uh, the input cover cable back into place. 
and then that drops back into place with magnets. Now we can flip it over, tighten the screws. Again, just like they all started before I slide them up. So I'm going to gently snug them. They don't have to be super tight, just enough that there's no play and that they're holding everything together. And now, moment of truth. Haven't plugged it in. It may have a longer boot than normal because that uh, RTC circuit will have reset, but we've got a power light, so let's see if it fully boots. And just like that, we are in. Didn't have to plug it in. It booted on its own. Well, I say on its own, but I mean without having me to, without me having to plug in the charger, which is actually the first time it's done that in quite a while. It's been uh, for quite some time I've had to plug it in to get it to turn on. So that's it. Mine is all fixed up. And I just wanted to kind of document that repair, show that even with my super shaky hands, um, it's actually not too bad. You can do it. Having said that, it is also, you know, very possible to break something doing this. So you only want to do it if you're comfortable. Um, I, I'm not always this shaky. It kind of comes and goes, but, um, today was a pretty shaky day, which is bad for doing this, but it's good for showing that you can do it even if you are that shaky. So, um, and I didn't use anything super special, uh, just some standard flux paste, um, just a cheap little tube of electrical solder. Uh, this is probably the most expensive part of it, uh, is my soldering station, but uh, that's just because I use this for other things. But that's it, got mine fixed. I'm logged in and uh, we're back to working like we should. Powered up, no problems, didn't have to be plugged in. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care. You were probably yelling at the screen or just plain laughing at me because I put it back together without putting this sticker back on. But hey, I did that on purpose, right? Because I wanted to show you what can go wrong if you forget something. <laughs> nope, I just forgot. But it's an easy fix. Just wanted to let you know, uh, right after I turned the camera off, I did remember. <laughs> and so I'm gonna pop it back apart, put that back on, and then it'll be good to go. Anyway, thanks for watching.